I set the record at the Hawaii Internationals uh, back in 1985, and I always wanted to get into wrestling. And uh, I, uh, I got called in by Vince and time from the NWA for interviews. In 85, you said NWA, Ted Turner's after you, basically yeah. Vince McMahon yeah. is after them Vince, after you. Yeah, I was pretty tight with, uh, still I'm kind of with uh, Tempatera. Before he knew I was going for the record, uh, I'd see him at the garden and stuff, watch his matches, and um, he knew I was going to get the record because it was pretty, I was pretty damn close. And, and uh got a call from Vince. I didn't want to let it deter me from not setting the record, so I didn't think about it until after I set the record. Then, then I had the opportunities. And then I had a meeting with Vince back when they had their uh, first office in Connecticut. And um, they put me through wrestling school, Tony Altamari's wrestling school in Orange, Connecticut. So that was cool. Only six months, so I kind of had to learn on the job, too, because they wanted me on there so much right away because Patera at the time got canned. He was in the uh, can because him and Sayuda, they attacked that guy at uh, McDonald's there for a Big Mac or something. Yes, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they got arrested and then fought the cops. and yeah, made, made Right, it way more right, yeah, and he had to do time for a while, but that, that helped me out because it was kind of like a clear way to get in the world's strongest man there, you know? Crazy though, only six months of training, and then it's like training on the road or like uh, on Pretty the much. job training. Yeah, yeah. So I just got it more involved in matches, more and more, as I as I progressed there. And then I turned heel. I went away to turn heel down in Texas, and I think that's where I really came into play as a heel. So even before you know you become a heel in Texas, but the WWF. And, you know, it's on the job training, and you basically got it recruited in. You're the and I was a baby man. face on, on, yep. in the WWE. So to go heel, Vince wanted me to go heel. So I went to Calgary, spent a few months there, then I went down to Texas, and then uh, I, uh, I I got the strap down there. But I never went back to to Vince because uh, I don't know. I I my business was going well. My mail order business that I had advertised with Joe Weed Muscle and Fitness, my uh, sports supplement business and stuff, was doing well. And um, I ended up getting married, had a kid early, so I just, just got out of it. Do you remember back to WrestleMania two being in that battle royal with all the NFL guys, too? Yeah, that was awesome, man. That was really cool. And we had a rehearsal, you know, the other night before that, whatever, just like uh, what we're going to do and stuff. You know, talked it out, and uh, those guys, you know, they respected us, and we respected them. That was Refrigerator Perry, Freilich, a lot of the Chicago beers, and uh, yeah, I was in touch with a couple of those guys up for a while there, but you know, everything, everybody gets distant, you know, but I thought that was, that was great, though. That was a great thing. It was a great showcase for me, man, being in a 20-man battle royal that's watched all over the world. The way Vince set that up, three different venues in one night, I was more in awe of the process. Yeah, WrestleMania 2 was unbelievable. To be able to do it, it shows you the popularity, to be able to sell out those three places and then put it on, you know, closed circuit mm. and then the version of pay-per-view for back then. and Plus have international, NFL. and then you had all the rights and all the, uh, it was on HBO and Showtime. I mean, yep, it was damn good. And then no, I, owe, I owe this to Vince. Vince gave me an opportunity, and it was uh, it was it was great. It was great, and I just uh, made sure that I did the right things and used the right persona. And uh, now, between Vince and, and Terry Boulay, they they uh, I was very happy to be on board. Very happy to be on board. You didn't think about it. NFL guys wanted to be a part of WBF at oh, that yeah. point. You yeah, know what I mean? They really didn't have to be got recruited rejected. in. A lot of them, they just don't get the character. They don't get the, uh, they don't get the panache, you know? How come you really left the WBF when Ken Patera came back? Did they not want two strong men that's together? That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, John. And that gave them, for me, to, to go away and become a heel. So 
that was working out well up in Calgary and down in Texas. But um, I never, I never came back. But that was, that was it, pretty much. So when did you? you Ken, Ken had, Ken had been, you know, a mainstay, a fixture with them. You know. Oh yeah. Yep. So, but they wanted me to become. I guess if they had me as a face. And I would have stayed, but I didn't want to become a face. You know, I, they wanted me to be a heel. And they were going to work out something with uh, me even going up against Dino Bravo because he tried to f- do the match with the weights and stuff. And it, he actually he actually failed a 700-pound lift with fake, with fake weights. Didn't go. That didn't happen on national TV. I kind of laughed my ass off. <laughs> but, um, no, I, uh, yeah, that's why. That's why. And then just life took a different turn. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.